you know. But that, that was the one where they, where, where, where they, where they switched, switched the ball about three different times. <laughs> we, were, we were at sea for the final ball. It was quite a nice goal, if you ask me. Apart from the handball, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, the handball is another issue. issue. But, 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 you know, let, let's be honest. Yes. Did it make any difference? They, they could have what this could have scored seven or eight. You know, it wasn't like we were unlucky because there was a handball. We were completely, absolutely dominated. Absolutely smashed to pieces and humiliated. And uh, it's horrible, but that's, that, that's it. You can't ignore it. We've seen it. We've watched it. Well, the last you can't time, say we Well, the last time you were here, when we were just about to play Chelsea, we speculated that if we lost the game, the pressure would be on Emery. After losing to City today, how much pressure is he under at this point in time? You, you're, you're a deep in thought, thought, George. George. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't think he's under tremendous pressure. I don't think he's under tremendous pressure from the fan base, and I don't think he should be either. Mm-hmm. Much as I'm disappointed now, mm-hmm. it won't do any good to anybody to kick off like they kicked off against Arsene Wenger. Who's going to benefit from that? Unless your motive is to get him out the club. Mm-hmm. You know? And I mean, the way it's going with the new regime, we actually might get a worse manager than him. <laughs> there's, no, there's no guarantee we'll get a better manager than Unai Emery. We could get him the worst manager. We could, we could probably get a cheaper manager, George. Cheaper manager, well. <laughs> but, the, but all that I keep thinking is, and it's, it's not a nice thought, yes. that if he goes, if he were to go, at least the new manager would play our best players. I mean, how ridiculous is it that your best players aren't picked to play. How how hard is it to pick your best player? Surely that's the manager's job. Now, how can he not think that Ozil is our best player? I don't care where, what sort of football he wants, what sort of fo- what philosophy he has. If you cannot fit Messi Ozil into a system, that's nobody's fault but yours. It's up to him to find a way to play our best player and get our best player playing well. Instead of playing him out of position or playing him or putting him on the bench. It's it's his job. That's his job. He must have he must have known when he came that Ozil was the star. We're just giving Ozil a contract for three hundred and fifty thousand pound a year. Oh, he we- knew who Messi Ozil was. He knew how committed we were to keeping him and he's not playing him. It's madness. It's just absolute madness. Well, some are saying that the directives are coming from on high. Frustrate him and get him out of the club and get the, get the wage off the, the books. Well, if they wanted him out of the club, he had the perfect opportunity. He could have been sold or he could have left. In January. In January or he could have gone in last summer. They clearly wanted him. They paid him three hundred and fifty thousand pounds a year a week for a reason, because he's easily our best player. He is the star of the team. He is the world class player at Arsenal. You know, That's why they wanted him. George, you now know there's, there's a stat saying, despite the, the fact that, that he has had so few games, games he, he has created more chances than. An Anybody else on the team? Of course. If he's only played one game a season, he'd probably have the same start. He's, <laughs> he's in a different creative league to everybody in the team. And they, they're saying, oh, I'd rather have a Warby playing. Or, oh, 
bloody. Uh, you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, please, please, please watch the guy play. He's a maestro. He's a genius. And they and and we have our fans saying he doesn't suit the system. Well, what's the system? If you tell me the system, I think, yeah, well, maybe he doesn't suit that system. But nobody can tell me the system because nobody knows the system. All we know is he's not playing. It can't be because he doesn't run enough, because he does. That's a statistical fact. He's one of our hardest working players in distance covered. Well, George, so, George, one of the disservices they do that I've seen done to Ozil is to bring him from the bench at the 60th minute or 65th minute marker. After a long spell of injury, and expect him to turn the game around, it is it is impossible. It is it is not even conceivable. And yet we have fans saying, "Oh, he can't be that good." We have pundits saying he can't be that good because he didn't come from off the bench and take the game by the so-called scruff of the neck. What, what kind of logic is this? I don't get it. Well, no, they, they just want to justify the stance on Ozil. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't understand why he isn't liked by pundits and journalists. Well, I, I just don't get it. Well, I'll, you know. I'll, give, I'll, I'll give, give you a hint. He's, he's Arsene Wenger's player. And Wenger was a disaster. disaster. That, that is... is a narrative that too many people are wedded to George, and it is well, it is killing this club. This is the problem, you see. That every discussion you have, every discussion we have, because Arthur Wenger was there for twenty-two years, either becomes a defence or an attack on Arthur Wenger. He's gone. Exactly. Exactly. He's, he's gone. He's left the building. And he, he's dropped the mic and fucked off. Now, I, it doesn't matter whether you think Emery is as good as Arsene Wenger, the same as Arsene Wenger, or worse than Arsene Wenger. It is totally irrelevant. What is relevant is what you expect from the current Arsenal manager. Not how good he is compared to the last one. What do you expect from this one? And we are not getting what we expected. And people can say all they want. They can be as supportive as they want. They can put all this false positivism forward. But the fact is, we ain't getting what we wanted. We ain't getting what we expected. And it really looks like it's not coming. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope you can turn it around. But... Is, are there any signs of it getting better? No. Are there signs of it getting worse? Damn right there are. It's a recent record is is abysmal, and even the games we're winning, it's not through great play. We're not like smashing teams to pieces. I mean. I don't know. We beat Burnley. Did we beat? I can't even remember how we beat Burnley, but. Last year, we beat them 5-0 last year. Yes, we did. <laughs> you know, that was us playing. That was in, at the worst period of Arsene Wenger's tenure. The very lowest point, we were beating teams like that, 5-0. What? But again, you see, we're bringing it back to Arsene Wenger. He's gone. It doesn't matter. What I'm saying is now... We expect better. Oh, we expect to see attacking football. We expect to see our best players playing week in, week out in their best positions. None of those things are happening. None of them. Not a one of them is seen to be happening week in, week out. Now, that just can't be right, Shelter. It just can't be right. Well, I hope our listeners... Concur. I wonder, wonder where you where you stand with our chances at the top four. 
because, because that, that is essentially what, what people are calling out for. And, and I, I want, want to be go on record. record. I, I want, want us to get, get top four. four. Top, top four is necessary. necessary. Champions League football, football is necessary. necessary. We, we need the money. money. We, we need the prestige. We need the players who will be attracted to the club by us participating in the Champions League. I, I never, never bought it in nonsense by many people that, that oh, we are so tired of Champions League football. Oh, uh, this, this is, is so predictable. predictable. <laughs> it's, it's like, like wake, wake up, up in the morning and say you know life is it's is predictable. It is nonsense. So I'm, I'm, I'm on, on record, record, George. George. This, this is a statement, not a question. question. We, we need Champions, Champions League, League football, but, but can, can we, we get, get there? there? Manchester, Manchester United, United is, is now ahead of us. The last time we spoke, they were fast coming up on the outside. They might have dragged themselves. From, uh, on the last game, they squeezed out a draw before today's game against Leicester, which they struggled to win. But George, they are unbeaten in eight Premier League games. So where do we stand in the race for the top four? Your thoughts. Can we get there? We can get there. Do I think we will get there? No, I think we'll finish sixth. And uh, I think we might struggle to finish sixth the way things are going. If we carry on the same as we've been going for the last 10, 15 games, we'll struggle to get fifth. If anybody else can put a run together. But, well, George, George people I... saying, oh, but, but, you know, we're putting all our eggs. Now, we're out the FA Cup early. We were out the League Cup early. We're still in the Europa League. Whoopie do! There's nobody in the Europa League, and until the champ, the Champions League failures come in, yes. and they're not the best teams. So yes, we have a chance of winning the Europa League. Yes, that will get us into the Champions League. That will qualify us. So all our eggs are in that basket. We're basically hoping that we can win a third tier competition to get us into the first tier competition because in my opinion we are not qualifying through the league and the problem I have is not that we're not qualifying I can accept us not being good enough to qualify what I can't accept is we have a squad easily easily good enough to qualify and we're not going to I'm 100% with you we, we added Torreira we added Socrates we added Guedouzi to an existing squad. We should be doing better. That's right. And we, and we have Aubameyang fully integrated, Lacazette fully fit. He was never fully fit last season until he came back from that knee operation. Exactly. People say, why is he coming off at 70 minutes? Because he was never fit. He was never fit enough to do 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. Arsene Wenger wasn't taking him off for fun. He was his best striker. He was taken off for a reason. He wasn't able to do 90 minutes. So we have him fully fit. We've got Aubameyang. We've got, as you said, Socrates. We've got Guendouzi. We've got Torreira. And we're worse. Well, well George, George, people are going to say we are five points ahead at this, this point, point last year. And, and we are one, one position ahead of this point, point last year. year. But, but as, as you have said, performance counts. It's, it's like backing a horse whose performances are lagging. lagging. Are, are you, you going to put money in him on the next, next race? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. Well, you can't. That, that, this is what we said in the last podcast, Shotter. Eventually, that, that 22, we are where we are, courtesy of that unbelievable 22 game unbeaten run and I say unbelievable because every statistic tells you we were winning games we shouldn't have been winning everybody wanted to ignore that everybody wanted to ignore the fact that Aubameyang scored nine goals from nine shots you know and thought and thought it could continue thought it was because we were making better opportunities for him thought it was no 
it was an anomaly and it's been proven to be an anomaly. 